just wouldn't believe that things could be so peaceful. They haven't always been this way. There was a time when this was the only house in town, and with no women folk in it. But now, there's my wife, Janet, my children, Sarah, Mary, Thomas, and John, and mother. She's not my mother, she's Janet's. But there was a time when she was my mother, really. Prosper's old mother. Our mining camp had only been going about a year, but I'd already hit my strike. So had quite a few others. We were ready for a little drink and a few hands of friendly poker after 14 hours in our mines. We were among friends, and the money that changed hands wasn't considerable. It usually went right around the circle and came back to you eventually. Yeah, those were friendly games. And our fights were friendly fights. We weren't really mad. We just didn't have anything else to do. Yesterday better. Yeah, but the real fight was Saturday. Ah, that was a bone breaker, a real record. Hey, we got almost everything here, almost, you know. Well, there certainly ain't no cause to complain. But when you stop to think now and then, there really is one thing missing. What's that? I don't notice nothing missing. All we need here now is a woman. A woman? Yeah, that's all we need to stir up trouble. Sam. Yeah, turn friend against friend. You don't really mean that, do you, Slim? What I don't mean is the kind of woman you're talking about. What I'm talking about is a mother kind of woman. What kind of woman's that? Well, Pike, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt by supposing you maybe had a mother once, but if you want... We've enjoyed our fighting for today. Slim, uh, what exactly was your idea, Slim, this mother kind of woman? You know, Prosper is someone who'd bring a little gentility into the camp. It's a fact. You could put all the gentility we got in a young bug's eye. There's a great deal to be said for a mother's touch. When you think what a mother kind of woman could do in the way of hot apple pie. And donuts. And the men in the socks and such. Where would she live? Well, you understand, Prosper. I'm just hypothecating with an imaginary kind of mother. But she, she wasn't imaginary. Well... She was your mother, for instance. She'd come in right handy in that new house of yours, especially when you ain't got nobody to come home to night after night. You see, Slim's idea hit me kind of hard, being as how I'd always been an orphan. I'd wondered a lot about this mother kind of woman he was talking about. There's no doubt that mother is the noblest of nature's divine inspiration. I've heard that, of course. Hardly anyone can deny that mothers have played a long and important role in the history of the human race. I had one myself, you know. And I didn't, you know. So, what do you think of my idea? In the course of you... of persuading some woman to come here with you and act as your mother, where do you propose to find such a woman? San Francisco. I gotta go there anyway, and I thought I'd go to the welfare people. The welfare people always seem to have plenty of mothers on hand, all right. And you think it's a good idea? You've got to be very careful, my boy. There are mothers, and then there are mothers. My mother chewed tobacco. Of course, there's were nothing against her, you understand. Colonel, you know, it's my idea to let the boys think this mother really is my mother. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that, Prosper, so long as you pick the right type of mother to represent you. Now, this tobacco-chewing habit of my mother started me out in life under somewhat of a handicap, I can tell you. I'll watch out for that. And have someone look over her teeth. I've known men who skirted bankruptcy for years trying to keep up their mother's teeth. Tobacco and teeth. 
You know, the ordinary man who has to take what he gets doesn't realize what a risk he's running, does he? So, armed with the Colonel's invaluable advice, I went to San Francisco and applied at one of the welfare agencies. I told him I was looking for a woman. I don't think he quite understood what I was getting at. So I tried to clear things up by telling him that I wanted an old woman. But that fella just didn't want to understand that what I was looking for was a mother. You mean that I'm expected to go to some crude, uncivilized mining town, and once there, pretend to be your mother? That's right, ma'am. Do you realize the background I come from? One of those prominent families in Boston, and pretend to be the mother of some impoverished nobody? Well, I, uh... And do you really mean to say that you're thinking of offering money to this sort of woman? Well, I haven't actually gotten around to offering any money, but those were my intentions. How much? Oh, I hadn't given that much thought, but I imagine we can arrive at some satisfactory arrangement. You see, ma'am, you're right about me being a nobody. But you're in the vicinity of about a million dollars of being wrong about me being an impoverished nobody. You've been grazed by good luck in your mining venture, Mr. Riggs? Oh, ma'am, I've been kicked in the teeth and slugged in the slats with good luck. So we bargained back and forth about the money for a while. And even though I didn't doubt that she came from a prominent Boston family, I knew from the way she bargained there must have been a couple of pawnbrokers who'd sneaked into her ancestry somehow. Finally, there was only one more point that had to be cleared up. And in addition, I'll have to be provided with all the medicinal spirits that my doctor feels necessary for my rather delicate health. Well, I don't think there'd be much trouble finding medicinal spirits, ma'am. Uh, about how much a day does your delicate health require? Don't be insulting, Mr. Riggs. This whole tawdry affair has upset me no end. So Mrs. Fairhaven was installed in my parlor, and the boys all turned up to pay their respects to my old mother. One of them had ridden clear over to Elkhorn and bought a batch of collars and ties. They sat around holding their teacups about as comfortable as a bunch of feverish chickens in a pot of hot water. Prosper was always such a good boy. Of course, the confinement of our society life in Boston made him feel a little restricted. You was in Boston society, Prosper? Oh, I suppose I was. Of course, I left home when I was very young. Oh, yes. You can imagine what it did to a mother's heart when her only son announced he was going to leave home and the family business and strike out on his own. Where'd you go from Boston, Prosper? Oh, I just rambled around, uh, picking up a job here and there. Many is the night the captain and I sat gazing into the fire, wondering what our boy was doing. I wasn't doing much of anything in particular. Then the captain would go to sea again, leaving me entirely alone, except, of course, for our countless servants. I'd have thought you'd have gone to sea, Prosper. What with your father being captain and all? Well, Colonel, we talked about it a lot. Yes, and of course, he died when Prosper was only 10. I hope you gentlemen will uh, feel free to smoke. Oh, you sure you don't mind, ma'am? No, indeed. In fact, I may join you. What kind of jobs was you taking when you was 10 years old, Prosper? Oh, well, anything that turned up. I, I was big for my age. Mother, wasn't I nearer 16 when he died? Of course, your birth certificate was burned up in that fire. I think your father thought you were nearer 20. I am sure Prosper would like to have us all drink a toast to his happy reunion with his dear old Boston mother. With this stuff? Oh, I'm sure you gentlemen will find something much more suitable on the table. Boys, it's my intention to enter into the life of the community. I understand that you boys have a game that you play called uh, poker. We do that sometimes, ma'am. You see, a man can't concentrate on spiritual matters all the time, ma'am. No. Well, I bought myself a book, and I've been studying up on it. And I, uh, I would like to play with you. I was thinking it might be a very nice idea if we had a game here on Friday evenings. Well, say, man. 
Real neighborly, ma'am. Just hope you won't find it too dull to play with an old woman. I decided not to play poker so that I could help Mother. After all, she was a beginner, and I didn't want the boys to take advantage of her. Did I say beginner? I saw things I didn't believe. And I think the boys saw some of them, too. I felt they were losing some of their enthusiasm for the game. I saw shuffling that only a professional dealer can manage. Why, she had more ways of manipulating cards than I'd ever seen before. You could sure tell who was winning from the looks of their faces. Only Mother had a smile. The boys were sure beginning to lose patience. At the last session, Mother seemed to lose some of her modesty and broke out a few new cuts. Then she fanned the cards and kind of run them up her sleeve. I couldn't bear to watch the slaughter. It looked like the colonel was getting the message. The second cards came pouring out of that deck. The boys were smiling and making bets. So I figured Mother must have slipped up someplace. But she had that smile of hers working full time, so I was prepared for the worst. Tom dropped out of the pot. But Pike, after looking his hand over, made a good-sized bet. It was the colonel's play, and I knew he had a good hand by the way he squeezed his cards and looked around. The colonel pushed in all his chips and laid down three aces. And when he reached for the pot, Mother stopped him. She had four aces. Exactly that she cheats. It's just that, well, doggone, there, there seems to be more cards in her deck than any deck I ever come across before. She got more fingers per hand when she deals than anybody I ever knowed before. Yeah, it's a fact. She don't play like no beginner. Well, me for one, I ain't gonna play with her no more. Are well, you gonna explain your refusal? Oh, well, just say I seen the light. Prosper ever catches you playing again, he'll shoot off your fingers for insulting his old mother. Well, we gotta do something. Or he'll start working the mines more hours per week. Well, I can't dig as fast as she can shuffle. Poor Prosper, just break his heart to know his mother was dealing an ice-cold deck. Sure won't cheer him up one bit when he finds out how many bottles of medicinal spirits she doctors herself up with every week. She sure must be real sick. But I wasn't quite as blind as the boys seemed to think. In fact, I'd known right from the start that I'd somehow gotten hold of a mother with more than just the ordinary faults. A uh, mother? Yes, Prosper? Don't you think you're hitting that medicine a bit too hard? You're not suggesting for a moment that I take it for anything except my condition? I'm suggesting that maybe you didn't hear the doctor right. The doctor knows about my condition better than you do. Yeah, but maybe he doesn't know about his prescription at this altitude. You know, even the best of our belly up to the bar boys taper off a little bit when they're over 6,000 feet. Don't be vulgar, Prosper. Well, I just thought maybe that medicine might be affecting your judgment a bit in those Friday night poker games. Well, I thought I was doing very well for a beginner. <laughs> That's what I mean. I haven't seen so many cards coming from so many places since they buried the blackjack dealer at the Golden Horn in Denver. Are you accusing me? And in case you don't know, Mother, that red deck of yours with the corners shaved off has 74 cards in it. Now, I want you to give the boys back all their money and stop playing with them all together. But I can't. You have no right. That's my money. I earned it. Give it back. But I can't. It's already invested against a rainy day. Well, then, Mother, interesting as I found your company to be, you'll just have to make plans to rejoin your friends at the welfare agency in San Francisco. Mr. Reeves? Yes, Mother. Don't you think the boys will be rather annoyed when they found out they've been made the victims of a cheap hoax? I won't 
always understood there was a very rigid code in mining camps. Mother, I don't scare easy. You tell the boys if you want to. But be ready to take the next coach to San Francisco. Do you mean to say that you turn an old lady, an old white-haired lady who's been a mother to you, that you turn her out? Yes, I guess you would. Mm. Mr. Riggs, is it too much to ask for an old lady in failing health? If she could have a few days to say farewell to a few friends and to pack? Well, a few days, that's all. A few days will be quite sufficient. See you tomorrow, Slim. Hello. It was so nice of you to ask me to visit with Mother. I'm very grateful. Uh, well, I, uh... Mother and I had lost track of each other. Then I got her telegram with your kind invitation. Uh, I see. Why don't we sit down, Mr. Riggs? Mother told me you came home at this hour, so I took the liberty of preparing you coffee and donuts. I hope you like donuts. Uh, I do very much. Mr. Riggs, I do appreciate you giving Mother this home. But I can't believe you realize the terrible thing you're doing to her. I'm doing? Putting her in a position where she's faced with all of these temptations. I don't think you quite understand. I know the whole story. I understand you're pretending to be her son. The entire situation is of your making. My mother's a weak woman in many respects. Weak? I'd match your mother against any three men I ever met in drinking, gambling, freestyle wrestling, or the telling of tall tales on cold winter nights. Mr. Riggs, you're speaking of my mother. Our mother, Miss Fairhaven. Sad as it is, it's true. Well, it's only when she's faced with overwhelming temptations, when there's no strong hand to guide her past them. Well, of course, Janet had to turn out to look like this. If nature had been concentrating for 10,000 years just in the job of producing the one girl I was going to fall in love with, she'd have looked exactly like Janet. She'd have had the same spirit. So here I was, head over heels in love for the first time in my life with my sister. I'll just have to make arrangements for Mother and me to leave as soon as it can be done gracefully. But I don't want you to leave. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Riggs. But you can see for yourself this is not the proper atmosphere for Mother. Or when I went walking this afternoon, I couldn't even find a church. A church? Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Church. So that settled it. If I wanted Janet to stay around, something had to be done about changing the atmosphere. If we ain't gonna do no more drinking here, what's gonna happen to my establishment? I'm buying a place from you, Clancy, for twice what it's worth. Then where are we gonna hang around doing our leisure time? Well, I uh, thought I'd turn this place into a church or something. A what? A church? I'm sorry, fellas, but that's the way it's gotta be. So if you'll just figure how much she's trimmed you for, I'll square it up with all of you. I ain't sitting still for no dry spell. Me neither. You got a lot to learn, Prosper. You know, you can kick a man's dog, and you could even insult his mother on occasion. But when you start interfering with a man's drinking habits, then, buddy, you better be twice as tough as anybody's ever been before. Pike, I sure hope you understand that there ain't nothing personal in this. I just can't allow my mother and sister to live <laughs> in such an uncivilized atmosphere. Now let's all pull together and stop this drinking, fellas. Come on, this is silly. This is too hard on you, fellas. I'm sorry. I appreciate the effort you've put forth, Mr. Riggs, but I think it's apparent that... <clears throat> painfully apparent that you're not going to succeed. I'm afraid Mother and I'll have to leave. You know, I'm amazed at this new talent you have for nursing, Janet. It's one of your added attractions. It sure came in handy. I, I don't know what I'd have done without you. You know, under the circumstances, perhaps we could remain over a few days. 
I'd sure be very grateful. I'd do it myself if I had the skill. Couldn't you stay for just a short while? Well, in that case, we'll stay for a short while. In that case, I think I'll go out for a short while. No need to rise, gentlemen. Aren't you boys ashamed to go knocking yourselves out when there wasn't any necessity for it? Don't you know that in a town like this there's always a woman like my daughter coming trying to change it? Well, we ain't gonna let it. We'll pass a law, no women. Except in mothers. Mm. Can't do that. It's against human nature. That's quite right, Slim. Besides, you don't have to stop drinking and gambling. We don't? No. You just go underground. You use strategy. Well, what's that? Uh, strategy is pretending you're doing one thing when you're really doing what you want. You just pretend you're never going to drink or gamble again. You can't fool Prosper that easy. Prosper too interested somewhere else to be concerned with anything we do. He will. Well, who with, ma'am? With my daughter. <laughs> He's going to marry her. Marry his own sister? And he won't even let us drink. Oh, he's no longer a son of mine. Oh, that's terrible. You shouldn't do that. As a matter of fact, he never was my son. I'm not really his mother. You aren't. You ain't. But, boys, he did it for you out of the kindness of his heart. You knowed about this? Yes, but it was because you boys wanted a mother. Think of all the trouble he went to, going all the way to San Francisco looking for a mother. You mean, of all the mothers in the world, he had to choose you? I had that honor. Well, how do we know that Prosper and your daughter will ever get together? Oh, I have sort of a mother's instinct. I'm sure they're together right now. Well, let's go take a look. Let's. Colonel, your arm. Oh. Did you cut your face, too? I tell you. Why, why did you do that? Because I love you. I want to marry you. No, Prosper. It's just because I've nursed you and you're grateful. I knew it the first day. It's your fever. Besides, it's impossible. I, I couldn't stay in a town where... I know, where there's no church. But we're going to have a church. And that's just the beginning. We've all agreed to give up drinking, gambling, and cuss wood. You are? You betcha. We seen the light. Then we can be married. Let's fill up some glasses and drink a toast to the new bride and groom. But, Colonel, you just said... But a toast is not drinking, Miss Fairhaven. It's quite different. Is... is that right, Prosper? Oh, uh, yes, dear. And while you're filling those glasses, don't forget the dear old lady who made all this possible. So, Prosper's old mother became Prosper's old mother-in-law. And in spite of that, things are pretty peaceful.